And this is what we all feel Let's just not deny it Something pulls and it tears In the deepest place This is what we all know Why must we still fight it? It's time to open our eyes Hey guys, Jay Young here with Young Red Angus. Thank you so much for making this video a part of your day. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. The bull sale is fastly approaching. In fact, it's this Thursday or Wednesday and Thursday. So that's March 29th and 30th. It starts at 1 p.m. on the 29th, ends the following day at 1 p.m. You can bid on every single bull at the same time. So if you are into regenerative agriculture and you have cows, or if you're not into regenerative agriculture and you have cows, check us out by clicking the link in the description of this video, or you can search us on DD Auction, Young Red Angus, or search us on the interweb, youngredangus.com. Today's video, we're talking about Johnson Sioux compost, and two of the most common questions that I get, which are, one, how much compost does my Johnson Sioux bioreactor make? So if I make a triple stack method like we're making, how much compost does that make? And two, how many acres can one bioreactor cover? So we're going to discuss that in length and kind of help you understand, you know, based on what you're wanting to do for your operation, how much compost you are going to need. Today's episode is sponsored by SoilWorks. Go to SoilWorksLLC.com and check out their awesome products like GSR Calcium and Bio5. That's SoilWorksLLC.com. All right, guys, question number one, how much does a Johnson Sioux bioreactor weigh? Like how much compost is in a Johnson Sioux bioreactor? Uh, uh, Johnson Sioux bioreactor. Uh, you know, sometimes I edit out these videos pretty heavy and there's a lot of gaffes like that, but I'm gonna leave that one in. Uh, how much compost does a Johnson Sioux bioreactor make? Ours, the triple stack method that we do, makes 600 pounds. Uh, to find that out, I had to get it out of the shed. So I had to get the bobcat, get it out of the shed, or I had to find the bobcat and remove a bunch of stuff out of the shed and get it out. And to be more precise, I had to ask Jerry, who is getting ready to use the bobcat for another project, to allow me to use the bobcat uh, for this YouTube video. And so huge thanks to Jerry, my father and business partner, who puts up with all these YouTube videos that I make for you guys. And you guys should type in, thanks, Jerry. Uh, so he feels appreciated. appreciated. But anyway, I digress. So we got the, the compost out of the shed, put it on our scales, we weighed it. It weighed 600 pounds. Um, I put another empty uh, bioreactor shell on there, just the bottom rung, basically like the same thing that's on the scale that you see. Uh, but anyway, I, I did that, did the math, 600 pounds. Um, that's like 272 kilograms for people who are in other countries that don't go in pounds. By the way, I'm not going to convert everything to hectares uh, instead of acres on this. The math would just make my mind explode. So uh, 600 pounds, one bioreactor makes 600 pounds of compost. Um. Now the next question that most people want to know, uh, how much compost do I need for my farming operation? Well, to answer that question, you need to be able to know what methods or what ways you're going to get the compost onto your operation. So there's three main ways that we're going to talk about today um, in getting this on your farming operation. So. And we're just speaking strictly in terms of extract, okay? If you want to do teas, the answer is going to be different based on teas. So you want to do your own research and searching out stuff about how to make tea, uh, compost tea instead of extract. We're just talking about extract in this video. So if I want to uh, get the, an that, the answer to that question, we're going to think about it in terms of, of 2,000 acres. So it's really simple, and we're going to talk about the three methods. So I'm going to talk about applying 2,000, sorry, I'm going to talk about applying compost extract in furrow to 2,000 acres of corn, uh, treating, 
uh, enough wheat seed to plant 2,000 acres of wheat and then foliar, doing a foliar application. So spraying or top dressing your wheat with Johnson Sioux compost or, or bio five, which we'll talk about in this video. So those three methods, how much compost do I need or how much Johnson Sioux compost do I need for those three methods of doing it? Uh, treating or uh, in furrow planting of corn at uh, eight gallons an acre, um, treating my seed at five gallons for 2000 pounds or doing a foliar application at 20 gallons uh, per acre on your foliar applications. So let's go ahead and talk about those. Number one, the corn. How many Johnson Sioux bioreactors will I need to plant corn or to apply Johnson syrup? Uh, Johnson syrup. See, I'm gonna leave these in. I want you guys to see how many times I actually gaffed and screw up and that's why I edit videos heavily. So 2,000 acres of corn, all right, to, to apply Johnson Sioux in furrow at eight gallons an acre, I'm going to need, uh, I've got it written here. So I'm to do 2,000 acres of corn, if I apply eight gallons an acre, that's one pound of compost for four gallons. So that's two pounds an acre that I need to, to be doing my corn. So at 2,000, um, at 2,000 acres, that's 4,000 pounds of compost. Um, so 4,000 divided by 600 is roughly like 6.6. .6. So I'm going to need seven bioreactors, um, to do 2,000 acres of corn. All right. That was simple enough. If I'm planting 2,000 acres of corn, you need seven bioreactors. To do a seed treatment on the wheat, if we're doing 2,000 acres and I'm planting it at four or 40 pounds an acre, that's 80,000 pounds of wheat I need or I need to treat. Okay, so at five gallons for every 2,000 pounds, that ends up being uh, 200 gallons of extract that I need. That means I only need 50 pounds of compost to do 2,000 acres of wheat. So clearly, by far, the most efficient is seed treatment, but I recommend doing all three. We'll kind of talk about that at the, at the end. The last one that we're gonna talk about is foliar. So to do foliar, we need 20 gallons an acre, or at least that's what I've uh, come to based on what other people have done. So 20 gallons an acre would mean that I need five pounds of compost uh, per acre, meaning that on 2,000 acres, I would need 10,000 pounds of compost. By my math, that means I would need at least 17 bioreactors to do the foliar application of wheat. So our, if we look at all three of those, uh, doing my 2,000 acres of corn, doing my 2,000 acres of planting wheat, and then doing 2,000 acres of top dressing my wheat, I would need 24 bioreactors to do all 6,000 acres that, that we're talking about. So when you guys think about what you want to do for your operation, I'll kind of give you an idea of what you need to be thinking of how many bioreactors I'm, I'm going to be building. It also makes you think, Man, if I want to do foliar applications, I probably should be use, utilizing products like Bio 5's product, um, or I'm sorry, like Soilworks product, Bio 5. And so that's what we're going to do. We'll use a little bit of our compost, mix it with the Bio 5, and we're going to do some foliar applications on our wheat um, if we get rain. If it doesn't rain, I'm probably not going to waste some money to do foliar applications because it's just going to die like it did last year. The last thing I want to cover on the topic of doing these uh, applications with compost extract. Getting it in furrow is good because you're getting the biology in your soil. Um, doing a seed treatment is good because you're causing the endophytes to penetrate the seed immediately. And so you're gonna get a response as soon as you put the seed out in the ground. Um, I think that they're both good because you know those endophytes are going into the seed and you already have it there, but you're not adding the biology into the ground like the nematode eggs and the, the protozoa, uh, microarthropods that would be in your compost. Like you, when you put do an in furrow application, um, I, I like you're getting that that extra biology in there. So there's there's a benefit to the seed treatment and there's a benefit to the doing it in furrow from from both of those perspectives right so 
um, make sure that you're you're contemplating doing both of those and consider that like seed treatment. Yeah, you're it goes a lot further, um, and your seed's gonna have that immediate response. Uh, you know, and it's probably better if you're doing it really really dry if you do the seed treatment because I don't know if that biology is gonna how long it's gonna live once you put it in the ground. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's gonna have a benefit, but I'm saying that's that's where the 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 pros kind of lean towards the seed treatment, um, but you know, you want to make sure that you're getting the biology in the ground as well. So I recommend both of those as far as that goes. On the foliar, the reason why you want to think about the foliar even is because, let's let's just take wheat for example. Uh, most people that grow wheat have, have experienced stripe rust. Stripe rust is a parasitic fungus that attacks your wheat plant. If you are doing a foliar application with the Johnson Sioux or the Bio 5 product and you're getting beneficial bacteria and specifically fungus on the stomata of your leaf, like the ones that will benefit the plant will go in and live within the stomata of the, of the leaf. I, I, you know, I, I, if I have a picture, I'll show that right now. Um, but anyway, that, 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 those fungal colonies will live within the stomata of your, your leaf and then they will kill stripe rust. So then you don't have to worry about spraying your wheat for stripe rust, which a foliar application at $5 an acre is way cheaper than a application of fungicide to kill everything, not just the stripe rust. So any beneficial fungus you might have out in your fields, you're nuking it and killing it when you spray fungicide on your field. So please stop spraying fungicide to treat stripe rust. Like we're much better off doing the foliar applications. Um, but anyway, I hope this was helpful in you guys' plans for making Johnson Sioux and kind of gives you an idea, hey, might want to look into Bio5's product. Plus, they have the Bio5 extractor, which is what we use to extract our compost. Um, yeah, hope that helped. Hope you guys are pursuing soil health. Don't forget about the bowl sale, uh, March 29th and 30th, and make sure you go to soilworksllc.com. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Thank you for pursuing soil health and Thank you so much for all the encouraging comments that you guys gave me in last week's video. I was bringing up how I'm getting burnt out and how like what I do, like being thankful that keeps me on a, on a positive trajectory. And I got so many comments of people encouraging me and uh, that meant a lot to me. Like I was thinking, Hey, I'm going to encourage people that might be burnt out and you guys reached out and encouraged me. And I really appreciate that. So everybody that ever, writes me an encouraging message on YouTube. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you guys for um, everything you guys do that are subscribed to the channel, that watch and um, that encourage me. Appreciate you guys. Keep pursuing soil health and uh, keep loving life. Catch you later.